All right, super quick one for you today. I wanna to show you two tools in the cut page that will help you actually keep your audience's attention and keep the pace of your video moving. I've got a timeline here, we're in the cut page. Now, if I just scroll through this timeline, and we take a look at these clips, you can see they're all the same camera angle. This is just one big, long talking head video. There's no B-roll, there's no punch-ins, there's, there's nothing. And we need all that stuff in order to keep our videos interesting. The only question is, where do we put all of it? And that's where the first tool that I wanna show you comes in. There's actually a tool in the cut page called the boring detector. And what it does is it detects shots that are longer than a certain length and it marks them as boring. So you know where you need to add B-roll or punch-ins or anything like that. And it's super easy to use. Let's go ahead and come in here to our timeline. And over here at the top left of our timeline, you'll see this little button with the three Zs. If you click on that, the boring detector will pop up and you can see you can change this value here. It says edits longer than six seconds are boring. By default, it actually comes as edits longer than 10 seconds are boring, but this is YouTube and the attention span of the audience is a little bit shorter. So we wanna actually shorten this to six seconds. For jump cuts, we can keep edits shorter than five frames or jump cuts. That's fine. I never mess with that at all. And then we're just gonna click analyze. And you can see all these highlighted spots in the timeline are places where DaVinci Resolve says, yo, this is boring. This is where we need to add some stuff. So let's go ahead and take a look at a couple things we can do here. Let's move our playhead to the first spot where it says our video is boring. And let's decide where we wanna add a piece of B-roll. Maybe right about here. That works. Let's go ahead and set an in point in our timeline. Scroll down a little bit. Go ahead and hit an out point in our timeline. And then let's come in, let's go back to our master bin and we're gonna go into our stock footage bin and we're gonna grab this piece of a race car driver here. And we're just going to scroll back to the timeline and we'll, we'll start it right there. Let's go ahead and hit F12. And you can see not only did we add a piece of stock footage right here as B-roll, but it also adjusted the boring detector accordingly and took out that highlighted section. And that's the really cool thing about the boring detector is as you add more B-roll, the boring detector will actually adjust itself and take out those highlighted sections so you see how many more places in your timeline you need to fix. But let's say you don't have any B-roll. Let's say you're only working with that one shot and for whatever reason you can't go to art grid and get some B-roll. Why am I still holding my stylus? Let's say you're only working with the one clip but you still need to keep it moving. That's where the close-up tool comes in which is super, super awesome and something that I use all the time. Let's go ahead into our timeline again. Let's go ahead and move forward to the next section where we're going to want to place something right here. Let's go ahead and scroll back to the beginning of that highlighted section. And what we're gonna do is simply come up to our tools here. And this one right here is the close-up tool. Let's click on that and it will add a close-up. And actually, if we go ahead and scroll backwards, you can see where it punches in, right there, and then back down to normal. And just that little bit of movement is enough to keep your audience's attention, which is super, super great. The only problem with the close-up tool is it doesn't work very well with the boring detector. So you'll see we still have that highlighted section there. So what we would actually need to do is come into the edit page and we're going to click on our clip, we're gonna hold down shift and we're just gonna bring it down into clip one. And then if we come back into the cut page, you'll see that we no longer have that highlighted area. And then basically all you gotta do is go down to each highlighted area and either add a close up or add a bit of B-roll and clean it up until all of those highlighted sections are gone. And then you've got a nice fast paced video that your audience is gonna pay attention to and not get bored by. So there you go, couple more workflow hacks for you. This time in the cut page for more workflow hacks in DaVinci Resolve, click here. And for more tools, tips, and tricks that'll make you a better video editor, make sure to subscribe to the channel and hit that bell so you don't miss anything. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.